Hi there, my name is Corinne LeBlanc, and I'm pleased to be able to present to you the NOAC antidote section of the 2016 Canadian Cardiovascular Society Atrial Fibrillation Guidelines on behalf of our entire writing team, Dr. Claire Atsima, Dr. David Gladstone, Dr. Mike Sharma, and Dr. Atul Verma. I'd like to share with you today the segment of the guidelines on NOAC antidotes. These are my disclosures. In terms of NOAC antidotes, currently available on the Canadian market, we have the dabigatran specific agent, Adarucizumab, or Praxbind. But there are also other agents currently being evaluated in clinical trials. One of which is Endexanet Alpha, which is that factor 10A reversal agent. So it works on medications like Apixaban and Rivaroxaban, but also some of the older anticoagulants like Enoxaparin or Fondaparinux. And the second agent is Seroparantag, which is being termed the universal reversal agent as it works on both direct thrombin inhibitors as well as factor 10A. Daricizumab is a humanized antibody fragment with 350-fold greater affinity for dabigatran than dabigatran has for thrombin. It works without obvious interaction with other drugs and without obvious procoagulant effects. In animal models and human volunteers, Adaricizumab has demonstrated immediate, complete, and sustained reversal of the anticoagulation effect of dabigatran. The data on which the current guidelines are, are underpinned is from the reverse AD trial. The reverse AD trial was a multi-center, open-label, single-arm study that's still ongoing, where dabigatran-treated patients who either had uncontrolled bleeding, which is group A, or those who required an emergency surgical procedure uh, or intervention, and that's group B, received a darucizumab. The primary efficacy endpoint in the trial was a maximum percent reversal based on coagulation parameters indicative of dabigatran's effect, namely the dilute thrombin time and the echerin clotting time. The investigators also looked at proportion of patients with complete normalization of these parameters within four hours. The population eligible for evaluation of the primary efficacy endpoint were those patients who actually had elevated dilute thrombin time or echerin clotting time at enrollment. Not all patients actually had elevated coagulation parameters in the trial. Of the 51 patients enrolled in group A, 40 had elevated dilute thrombin time and 47 had an elevated echerin clotting time at enrollment. After administration of adarucizumab, two by 2.5 gram doses, 15 minutes apart, there was 100% maximum reversal and complete normalization in 98% of patients when looking at dilute thrombin time and 89% of patients when looking at echerin clotting time. Similarly, in the group B patients, remember that these are patients who required an urgent procedure or surgical intervention. Out of the 31 patients enrolled, 28 had elevated uh, dilute thrombin time at an enrollment, and 34 had elevated echerin clotting time at enrollment. And similar to group A, there was 100% maximum reversal and complete normalization in 93% of patients according to dilute thrombin time and 88% of patients according to echerin clotting time. In terms of safety, there were no hypersensitivity events. There was one thrombotic event that happened early on within 72 hours and nine patients in each group died, their deaths being described as related to their presenting index event and their comorbidities. This data underpins the 2016 Atrial Fibrillation Guideline Committee recommendation to administer a darucizumab for emergency reversal of dabigatran's anticoagulant effect in patients with uncontrolled or potentially life-threatening bleeding and or those requiring urgent surgery for which normal hemostasis is necessary. The Guidelines Committee made that a strong recommendation with moderate quality evidence. The discussion at the Guidelines Committee table around this recommendation placed relatively greater value on the ability of darucizumab to reverse the coagulation effects of dabigatran, its potential to translate into decreased bleeding-related outcomes and risks of urgent surgery, all with very few adverse effects. The committee placed less value on the lack of a control group in the reverse AD trial and the cost of a darucizumab. In terms of translating this recommendation into real-life clinical practice, we see the role of a darucizumab for the acute life-threatening bleed situation where the clinician believes that standard resuscitation efforts aren't going to be enough or, in fact, they've already been tried and aren't working. In the, st in the study, the presence of dabigatran was evaluated using a dilute thrombin time and the echerin clotting time. 
most hospitals won't have access to these tests. Instead, the thrombin time and the activated partial thromboplastin time can generally qualitatively identify the presence of dabigatran. But importantly, obtaining these tests should not delay the administration of the reversal agent. Interestingly, in the study, despite rapid and complete reversal of the coagulation parameters, 16 patients had re a slight re-elevation in dilute thrombin time and echo and clotting time within 24 hours. Current thinking is that this likely represents a redistribution of the drug of dabigatran outside of the extravascular space back into the intravascular space. This didn't have any clinically meaningful consequences in the trial and there was no indication that any of these patients received a second dose of daricizumab. Perhaps the most important clinical pearl or practical tip related to this guideline is to reevaluate the need for anticoagulation as soon as is medically appropriate. In fact, all of the patients who experienced the thrombus in the reverse AD trial did so without having any anticoagulation restarted.